Okay, hello year nine and ten and welcome back to the last half term of school. Somehow uh, we've made it to the end of a year, although let's face it, we haven't been back in a long time anyway. Um, quite simple tasks this week. Okay, I'm aware that some of you last term struggled to submit the work, maybe you didn't have a computer or a way to complete the work. So we've tried to make this easier so that you can all do it. Um, you can do these just on your phone if you want to. So, I thought I'd start by telling you about my theatre journey last year. As you know, I, I'm a bit of a cheapskate and I don't like to spend money, but I still am trying to go out and see theatre as my New Year's resolution. And this is connected to the task you're going to do today. So last year, I went to Wicked for the fourth time. I got those tickets for free. I went to see a play called Bitter Wheat with a famous actor called John Makovich. I saw Ian McKellen on stage talking about his life. I saw a play called The Man in the White Suit, which was um, like a comedy, like with physical comedy, people falling over, kind of like the Chuckle Brothers. I saw Don Quixote. And uh, one of my most exciting things was I had my first experience of watching theatre at the cinema. And I went to go see Fleabag live because I couldn't get tickets because they sold out so quickly. So I had quite a busy year at the theatre. This year, 2020, was going to be the same. So up until the lockdown, I only made it to one play so far and I watched Uncle Vanya, which is a Russian play, but it starred quite a few famous people from like Hunger Games and Captain America. Post lockdown, or well, the rest of the year I was supposed to be seeing, uh, Hairspray with Michael Ball, I'd already paid for tickets. The Pillow Man with Aaron Taylor Johnson, most of you will know from um, Godzilla, possibly some other films. And the most exciting was that I was going to see To Kill a Mockingbird, written by my favourite uh, director and writer ever, and it was going to be starring some Hollywood stars. And that was supposed to be two weeks ago, and I'm absolutely gutted. Um, but that's going to be rescheduled for next year. So that was my plan, and obviously things had to change quite quickly. And I just assumed that I was not going to get to see any theatre for the whole year. But I was wrong. This is just a snippet of what I've actually seen. Since, uh, since what, March 23rd, 24th, when the lockdown officially started. So I've seen uh, Six, which was a musical uh, with music in the style of the Spice Girls, but about the six wives of Henry VIII. Uh, it sounds ridiculous, but it's really fun. I've seen the American version of Hairspray, which was live and included Ariana Grande, Jennifer Hudson, um, and some other famous people whose names I don't actually know. I watched a recording of Phantom of the Opera. Andrew Lloyd Webber put this online free for three days. So only three days could you go onto YouTube and watch this. And the most exciting was this week uh, when I, and I actually sent the link this to you on Show My Homework, but I watched the production of A Streetcar Named Desire, which is an incredibly famous play by Tennessee Williams. Some of you have probably heard about it. Um, some of you might even have had to read it for English. And this was online for six, uh, sorry, seven days only. And it was two and a half hours long and it was exactly what they showed in the theatre. And even though I was only watching it from my sofa on my TV, it was the best piece of theatre I've ever seen. And what I can't believe is that I didn't notice a difference. I thought that I might miss being actually in the theatre and that it wouldn't feel as real. But actually, it's been just as exciting to watch these things at home. And I want you to have a think about that, about is it the same? Can we have theatre at home? without it spoiling the atmosphere. And it has been really good. And it made me think, is this the future of theatre? Is theatre still important in modern life? Should I be talking about theatre right now when everything that's going on in the world? Why would we bother having theatre when we can just go on Netflix or Disney Plus or um, all the other things that we pay a ridiculous amount of money for that has all this brilliant content? Why would I bother paying to go to the theatre? And that's kind of what your task is about this week. You were chosen to do drama, which I can only assume means that you enjoy it. Whether it's the performing that you enjoy or the watching of theatre, somehow you like theatre. So we're going to do four tasks today. You've got until Friday to do this. Um, so don't worry about doing it all today, but I'm going to explain it all today. So task one, we're about to do together in a minute. And we're going to watch a video um, of a guy who works in a the theatre. He's talking about the importance of a performing arts. 
Okay, so he is American. It's a little bit cheesy. You might not understand everything he says, but I really want you to think about, um, you know, what is he saying? How is it important? Because task two is going to be a quiz about this, okay? And at the link bottom there, I've got a link. If you need to see this again, you can just go to YouTube and search for True Power of the Performing Arts. Okay, so we're going to go over and watch this video now. It's 12 minutes long. So if you need to pause the video, go get yourself a drink. That's absolutely fine. Wow, okay, that brought up a lot of ideas. Um, I made some notes as I watched on things that I found really interesting. I won't bore you for too long. Um, one of the first things that got me thinking was how he said about ordering online and how we're so used to just getting what we want when we want it. If I feel like watching, uh, um, you know, like a Disney film, I can now go online and instantly have access to like 60 or 70 of them. Uh, if I want... Uh, for example, the other day, I ran out of hair conditioner. I couldn't be bothered to go to a shop. I went on Amazon. I ordered it. It came the next day. And I had a look at my Amazon account as we were watching this. And I have ordered 49 things on Amazon in the lockdown alone. And that is not the only website I've been on. And that is something we're completely used to. And as he says, that goes completely against what theatre, antique old theatre, as he says, goes against. Do we want a theatre where you're limited in having to travel there when you have to get there by 7.30 and if you're 10 minutes late, you're not allowed in that theatre? Where plays cost so much money. I mean, guys, that play that I talked about here, To Kill a Mockingbird, I paid 50 quid a ticket for that and that was one of the cheapest. Some of the tickets were talking three, four hundred pounds for an event that's going to take two, three hours maximum. That's more than my year subscription subscription to Netflix. And I think that's quite crazy. Other things he said, um, audience numbers are down. People aren't going to the theatre necessarily, but the people making theatre, making art, making music, those numbers have gone up loads because of what we can do with our technology, because we want our voices to be heard. And what I found really, really brilliant was when he talked about how the performing arts for years has been about making money, about sticking to traditions. But actually it's, it's becoming broader. It's now about, um, he said, generosity and curiosity, about being political, about helping bring communities together. And that's gonna be timeless, isn't it? No matter what you think about going to theatre to watch a 200 year old Russian play, it's gonna be invaluable if we can bring our communities together and share things going on in our lives. You've done that with your theatre in classes. I think it's really, really important to think about that. So I hope you enjoyed that video as well. Your task now is to go to the second piece of homework, okay? So you've got this link from one piece of homework. Um, there's another one that's got the title quiz. I want you to do the quiz and it's based on that video. Now don't forget you can do it any, you know, three times if you've forgotten anything, that's fine. So what I'd suggest is that you pause this video right now, go and do the quiz, and then you come back after the quiz Press play and you can see me explain the next two tasks. Okay. The next task is a bit less time demanding, but it's an article that I came across a few weeks ago. And it talks directly about how theatre has um, changed and adapted to the pandemic. Now, you might think that a video I showed you just then was to do with the pandemic, but it wasn't. It was actually filmed nine years ago. But those issues were relevant, but even more so now because theatre industry has been forced to adapt, to change how they show theatre, to change how they make money. So the link to this article is in the first piece of homework and it looks like this. OK, so the stage is a very famous um, magazine, drama magazine, but it's mainly online now. OK, so... There's an article here and it's titled Coronavirus, Online Theatre Audiences Booming During Lockdown. So they're saying just from the title that the amount of audiences is going up and up. Even more people are watching theatre from home. OK, so I want you to read the article. I'm not going to read it for you. It's not actually a very long article. I've said 10 minutes, but you could probably read it quicker. And that's task three, which leads you on to task four. This is slightly different if you're in nine or ten. If you're in year nine, you have to write one paragraph. If you're in year 10, I want two paragraphs. Only fair given you've done a, an extra year of 
drama. And I want you to just write me one or two paragraphs um, answering the questions at the bottom. So, um, this first one here, sorry, that should be in a bullet point as well. So what does this article tell us about how the theatre industry has adapted to coronavirus? How does that compare to what Ben Cameron said in the video from Task One? I hope you've all shaken your head in anger at the non-capital letter from name Ben. Shocking, Miss Ben. Um, and lastly, what is your opinion about this? Do you think theatre is still important during the pandemic? If you say no, that's okay, that's your opinion. There isn't a right or wrong, but I'd like you to explain why you think that. Okay. Um, and lastly, there's two ways you can submit, okay? So that's an example of a piece of work from a year eight student. He wrote his answer, he took a picture. You can do that and send it to me and show my homework. Or you can write your answer in a comment box and you can post it directly on that. Either of those are fine, I, both of those work with a phone, okay? So in order for me to say that both are submitted, uh, both tasks, you need to complete the quiz and you need to write a paragraph, okay? Thank you very much, Year 9 and Year 10. All that's left for me to say is have fun.